Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's a smaller crew because we're divided between kids over there, junior high up here, us in here, and we have a second service happening today. So we've got people coming in both, um, and that's just fine. And welcome to those online also. Um, I'm just going to start with a verse that's a very simple verse from 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Lord, we thank you that your perfect love drives out fear, and we ask that today we would get to know in a deeper way and encounter your perfect love. Thank you, Father. So as we worship, uh, feel free to stand, sit, clap, raise your hands, whatever is comfortable for you. Um, no singing, but uh, just listen to the words and let them minister to you and let the Lord meet you in that.
message that is to know the love of God. I hope that you've experienced it yourself. If you want, you can have a seat. Band members, thank you so much. You can grab a seat as well. But welcome to Abundant Life here in the building and as well online. We also have a kids program going on and a junior high program going on upstairs. So very exciting times here at Abundant Life. We're so glad that you are here. Please make sure you give someone an air fist pump before you go. We strongly encourage those. I just have a few announcements. So we are doing a, a winter clothing giveaway that's coming up next Saturday, but we need you to drop off any winter clothes that you have. So if you're going through and you have like four pairs of gloves and you only need one pair, just donate the other three. And we're taking donations up to the 22nd, this coming Tuesday. So please drop them off here at the church. That would be great. And then we will be having a free clothing giveaway Saturday, September the 26th. And that's going to be running from 12 to 3. So please, if you're looking for some winter clothes or some, some clothes, please drop by the Life Center next Saturday at from 12 to 3. Also on Friday, September the 25th is going to be our monthly community dinner and this is available to all people from 5.30 to 6.30. If you're walking in you can line up at the Life Center or you can drive and we will bring the food right out to your vehicle. What service, I'm telling you. It's amazing. Better than McDonald's, I'm telling you. It's really good food. So, if you're looking for a good, good meal next Friday, please come by the Life Center. Also, we just want to thank you for your faithful giving. It helps us to be able to do things like community dinners and to have kids programs and junior high programs. So, please continue to give. If you'd like, you can give through an e-transfer, and that's at giving at AbundantLifeCap.com. And we just thank you so much for your faithful giving to us. Let me just pray before I get into the message time this morning. God, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for all the great things. And I pray for anybody that might be watching or here in the building that maybe is just feeling fearful or anxious or just needs to experience some of that love that we're talking about. Your love where you would just go to any lengths to love us. And I pray that people would experience that this morning. So we ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, it said, the story goes, that during the 9-11 terrorist attacks, they were having a difficult time in, in helping kids. They, they recognized that a lot of kids were struggling. They were anxious. They were fearful. They didn't really know what to do. And so they went knocking on a familiar guy that knew how to interact and speak to kids. And his name was Mr. Rogers. Anybody ever watch Mr. Rogers? Yes. And, uh, and so they went to him and they said, listen, Fred, because they were on a first name basis. Um, we're having a little difficulty connecting with kids right now. And the reason why they went to him is because during his television program is when there would be traumatic events that happened, he would speak into those events. And he was known as helping a lot of kids navigate difficult times. And so they called on him once again, and he did these series of, of little just promo videos where they could help kids through this time during 9-11. And he actually, the media, the press, started to give him this nickname, Shepherd to the Kids. And I thought, wow, that's pretty neat. And they started asking him, and they're like, Mr. Rogers, you know, it's so great that you're, you're here. I, I watched you when I was a little kid. You helped me, and, and you're helping so many kids. But why did you do it? could have been retired, sipping your lemonade, you know, just enjoying your retirement, but why would you do it? And he said this, he said, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, 
Look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And Mr. Rogers said, I want to be that person for these kids. And what's so amazing is that when we know Jesus, we know that his help came through the greatest act of love by sacrificing his life for ours. And Jesus shares with the people events that are predestined to happen in John chapter 10. He begins to share with them, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I am going to help you. This is how much I love you. This is what I'm going to do when he arrives in Jerusalem. So if you have a Bible with you, or if you have a Bible app, always recommend that you bring it. It's, I'm looking at John chapter 10, and I'm looking at verses 17 to 21. This is John chapter 10, 17 to 21. The Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may have it back again. No one can take my life from me. I lay down my life voluntarily, for I have the right to lay it down when I want to, and also the power to take it again. For my Father has given me this command. And now when he said these things, the people were again divided in their opinions about him. Some of them say he has a demon, or he's crazy. Why listen to a man like that? Others said, this doesn't sound like a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? So this is Jesus. He starts sharing with the people. And some people were listening to what he had to say and were like, wow. This guy speaks with such authority. This is amazing. But then there was other people that just weren't sure. They thought he was out of his mind. They didn't, they didn't understand what he was talking about. And the interesting thing is you would think it's Jesus. Anytime that Jesus spoke, people were probably like, oh, wow. This is amazing. But that wasn't always the case. There's actually said that some people didn't believe him. Now, it's one thing when we go to tell people about Jesus, but this was Jesus himself. And they didn't believe him. He's like, what more do I have to do? There's a musician named Bono. He's in a group called U2. And, and he was being interviewed by this Irish television station. And, and for some reason they had heard something that maybe Bono was interested in church or he had read his Bible or, or maybe they even thought he was a believer. And they began to ask him about Jesus. And they began to push it in. And first in the interview he was kind of like, yeah, I, I, I pray, yeah, I read my Bible. But they kept pushing it and pushing it. And finally he said this. He said, they began to say, who is Jesus to you, Bono? And he said this, Jesus went around saying he was the Messiah. That's why he was crucified. He was crucified because he said he was the Son of God. So he either, in my view, was the Son of God or he was nuts. And I find it hard to accept that whole millions of lives, half the earth for 2,000 some years, have been touched, have felt their lives touched and inspired by some nutter. I just, I don't believe it. There was people in this crowd that were torn, that if you were to go to them and say, who is Jesus? Some of them would have said, he's nuts. But others were like, he's, he's changed my life. He's radically changed my life. But Jesus, in this passage, begins to show us the types of people that Jesus loves. Those that Jesus loves, the type of sheep that he loves. So the first part, first group of people we see are the doubters. 
Now, what's very interesting to note in here, when we start to see that people said, I, I don't believe it. We didn't all of a sudden see Jesus say, well, guess what? When I go to Jerusalem and, and I'm going to die on the cross, all of those that don't believe in me, I'm not dying on the cross for you. Sorry. You want to, you don't believe me? You think I'm crazy? Then fine. Get somebody else to die on the cross for you. Doesn't say that. Because Jesus was going to die on the cross for no for everybody, for all people. Whether you believed him or not, he was going to the cross. He was going to do his mission for all people. So we begin to see some, some types of group. The first group are the doubters. It says in verse 19 that people were divided in their opinions. There was people that they just weren't sure. They were, I don't know. I, I, I see both sides here. I, I see that, that yeah, what, you fed 5,000 people with just a small lunch? Yeah, wow. Like, I can't not say that that isn't amazing. But, but yeah, but he also says some, some really hard things and some things that don't make any sense. And I'm, I'm really torn here. I, I don't know. I, I, he seems like people are following him and people like him and, and think he's a pretty decent guy. But he's saying that he's the son of God and he's, he's saying he's going to rebuild the temple. And I, I don't know what to believe. And they were, they were just doubting it. And maybe you've met those kind of people. They're in your workplace or in your school. And, and you try to bring up Jesus and it's like, whoa, 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 fine with you. If you like him, that's okay, but no, I have my opinions. I know what I think of him. Sure, okay, he was a pretty good guy, I guess. I'll, I'll believe you on that point. But the rest, God, his forgiveness of sins, this whole stuff on the cross, I don't know. And there's doubters. And remember, this was Jesus speaking. But there was a group of doubters. And he actually, one of his own disciples, was given the nickname Doubting Thomas. He was the guy that, that when everybody else saw Jesus alive, was like, I haven't seen him, don't believe it until I see him with my own eyes. But Jesus loves those sheep. Jesus went to the cross for even those that are doubters. And, I, and maybe you're even saying from time to time, you know what? I have doubts. I sometimes wonder, this doesn't seem like it could be real. And you struggle through things. And God never wants us to ever not come to him with his doubts, with our doubts, with our questions. God doesn't look at us and say, you have to believe everything that I say, or I'm going to stop loving you. It doesn't work that way. And we can bring our doubts, we can bring our questions to, though, to God himself, and he will listen. So Jesus loves the doubters. The second group was the critics. In verse 20, it says that they stopped listening to him. These were the people that were just, they didn't just have doubts. They were critical. They were, they were starting to hurl insults at him. They were going in with what the public opinion was saying about him. They weren't forming their own opinions. They weren't having doubts. They were just all out critical. No way. He never existed. He never lived. 
There's no way. This guy is crazy. He's not Jesus. Sorry. Open the eyes of the blind. I can do that. And they were critical. They were like, they just, they turned their eyes off. It was like, la, 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 I don't hear you, Jesus, la, 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 la. Have your kids ever done that to you? <laughs> You're trying to talk to them, and they're like, la, 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 mommy, mommy, don't hear me, daddy. But they were critical. I, I, I couldn't imagine everything that, that I know about who Jesus is. If he came and it was just sitting right there. I would be like, here, you preach, you know, because it's, <laughs> but it would be, I can't be critical. You've changed my life. You've done so much for me. How can I just turn you off and just say, I don't believe anything that you did. I don't believe everything you said, the Bible. No, I'm not going to read my Bible anymore. But sometimes we, we go through tough situations. We go through hardships. We go through life. And, and, and sometimes life knocks us down. I don't know if you've been there, but sometimes you're like, oh, Jesus, where are you? And maybe some of the people in this group, they could say, well, my brother is still blind. That's nice that you healed that guy's blindness, but my brother, he's still blind? Jesus, why don't you heal him? Or, I don't know how I'm going to feed my kids. Jesus, you said you would provide for all of my needs. I have needs. Jesus, I, I've tried to live for you. I, I've tried to tell people about you, but everybody just laughs at me and mocks me and, and makes fun of me. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I have the strength. And we just kind of just say, I, I don't think it happened. But Jesus loves the critics. Jesus would spend time with them. He would, he would be around them. He was okay if, if people challenged him. He had to tell his disciples off many times because they would challenge him. They would look at Jesus with like the goofy looks like, what are you talking about? Peter, you know what I'm saying? Bartholomew? Does that make sense to you? Judas? Judas, where are you? Judas? Oh, he's off again. But Jesus loves the critics. And, and you come into contact with people that are critical. You, you actually come into contact with people that are just critical about anything. Even if you hand them a million dollars, they're going to be like, well, um, can I have it in like just dollar bills? <laughs> just tens? Can you put it in a briefcase? But Jesus loves the critics. And, and I just want you to know if, if you are, you have doubts, you have questions, that's okay. If you are critical, if you are like, I'm not really sure if I believe this yet, you know what? You are welcome. Jesus loves you so much. We don't have to have it all figured out. We, we've got that wrong. We think that anybody that's in church has it all figured out. I don't have it all figured out. But you are welcome here. Jesus says, come to me, all. All who are weary, all who are burdened. Jesus doesn't go... You have to believe every single thing about me. You have to know everything. You have to know every Christian word, the definition, use it in a sentence, spell it. He's like, just come. All are welcome.
And then the third group, and maybe this is where you might find yourself, is the believers. And these people begin to speak up and say, listen, no, you've got it all wrong. Oh, Jesus is who he says he is. Jesus is amazing. He's touched by life. I believe in him. I give my life to him. I give him 100%. And Jesus loves the believers. But I think we have to remember that Jesus doesn't love the doubters or the critics any less than he loves the believers. I know sometimes we like to think that I believe in Jesus. <laughs> So, I mean, Jesus, we're tight. He's, he comes, helps me out whenever I need it. Yes, Jesus is, a, is, is great, greatly appreciates all those that believe in him. All that have called on his name and have been saved and are following him and are living for Jesus. Yes, he is your biggest support. He is behind you. But Jesus loves the sheep that doubt, that are critical, that believe. Because, like I said in this passage, Jesus didn't backtrack and say, well, I guess the plan is off now. No, he was going to Jerusalem. He was going to die on the cross for every single person. Remember the two thieves on the cross? If that one thief had just said, I believe, oh, it would have turned out so different for him. So we, we need to be examples of this. We need to go and find people and have conversations and, and be around people and invite people. I want this place to be filled with all kinds of people. I want people here that believe. Yes, we need strong believers, absolutely. But we need people that, that have questions, that are going through tough times, that are, are critical. And, and let this place be filled. Have opportunities, have conversations. Take Jesus to all people. But they're going to make fun of me. Yes, they might. They're not going to believe me. Yes, that's true. They're going to think I'm nuts. Maybe. But I know that there's going to be opportunities when they're going to be at their house. They're going to be going through something. And and God is going to speak words into them. And they're going to be like, wait, I heard that from a co-worker. Man, that, 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 that guy in school that, that you know, he, he tells everybody about Jesus. And I, I think he's right. I think he's on to something. And you just never know what the Holy Spirit can do with what we've done. We're just told... Go and tell people. And the Holy Spirit will do his work. He will do his job. And he will draw the people to him. There's a pastor, his name is Judas Smith. And he says this about Jesus. He says, I think if Jesus had one shot at fixing us, he'd tell us how much he loves us. Jesus loves us right now, just as we are. He isn't standing aloof, yelling at us to climb out of our pits and clean ourselves up so we can be worthy of him. He is wading waist deep into the muck of life, weeping with the broken, rescuing the lost, and healing the sick. That, my friends, is Jesus. He will come to you exactly where you are.
whether you're a doubter, whether you're a critic, whether you're a believer, whether you're in trouble, whether your life is great, whether you're in the church, whether you're at home, wherever you are, Jesus loves you. And I hope that that resonates inside of your brain for those that are watching online, for those here in the building, that Jesus loves you. The band is going to come back and, and lead us in a couple more songs. And, and as they're, they're leading us in these songs, I want those three words to sink deep into your brain, into your cranium, deep. Jesus loves you. You. No matter what you think of him, no matter what your circumstances are, this place, Abundant Life, is a place where Jesus loves all people. All people are welcome here. All people, and if that's just you watching online or here in the building, Jesus loves you. And the band is going to lead us in some songs. And let just the words of the songs, let this message really just, just wrap around you, soak over you. Just let it really sink in that Jesus loves you. You know, I have uh, young children, and one of the things that often happens is whether one of them just wants to be close to me or whether they're struggling with something, whether they've hurt themselves, whether they've fallen down, or whether they're sad or scared or whatever it is, or maybe they just want to make sure that I'm still there, is come and ask to be picked up or sit on my lap and just, just sit with me for a bit. And, um, and this first song is just about being in his presence. And sometimes that sounds like a very kind of spiritual out there kind of term, but I just want you to think about it as I'm coming to sit with Jesus, just like a little child would sit with his mom or dad and just be in the presence of the one who died for me, the one who loves me and let him, even if I'm not sure about him, let him show himself to me, show how much he loves me. Let him drive away any fear that's there, any anxiety, any worry, any hurt, anything that I'm carrying today that's holding me back. So Jesus, we just come and thank you for the privilege of being able to just be with you in your presence. And we invite you to just come and show yourself to each of us in a special way, your love for us, because it's out of that place that we then have love to show to others.
Let me just pray before we go. Lord, thank you for each person that joined us online and here in the building. I thank you for each of the kids and for the junior highs. Lord, I pray that they would recognize that they are children of you. That you love them no matter what their week is going to look like. I pray that they would know that they can look to you, God. They can come to you with their questions, with their doubts, with their opinions, with their thoughts. And you love them just the same. So thank you for each person here. Bless them, I pray, as they go. May they have just a fantastic week, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us online and here in the building. I do hope that you have a wonderful week. I'll see you next week.